Louis Vuitton is a name that is synonymous with luxury and high-end living. Founded in 1854, the brand has become an icon in the fashion industry, known for its high-quality craftsmanship and timeless designs. The story of Louis Vuitton is one of determination, innovation, and a steadfast commitment to excellence. From its humble beginnings as a small luggage store in Paris, the brand has become one of the most recognized and respected names in the fashion world. But before we jump into how it all started, be sure to subscribe and watch until the end of the video. It's genuinely fascinating to see how some late additions to the company were able to significantly bolster the global impact of the brand. The story of the fashion titan began with the dream of its founder, Louis Vuitton. At the young age of 16, he commenced an apprenticeship with the trunk maker Monsieur Marechal in Paris. Vuitton's journey to the city was a testament to his determination and spirit. He walked a staggering 450 kilometers from his birthplace in Anche to fulfill his dream of becoming a maletier or trunk maker. Vuitton's talent and dedication quickly caught the attention of the Parisian Atelier, where he sharpened his skills for 17 years at Monsieur Marechal's. Finally, in 1854, Vuitton opened his workshop at Quatre Rue Neuve de Capucine, near the Place Vendôme in Paris. This was a remarkable accomplishment for Vuitton, as only a year earlier, he had been appointed by the Empress of France, Eugénie de Montijo, as her official trunk maker and packer. In 1859, Vuitton moved his trade to the commune of Agneur-sur-Chien. Today, this workshop is an important symbol of Louis Vuitton's heritage and remains at the heart of everything the fashion house has ever created. At the time of its opening, the shop had just 20 employees. By 1914, 225 workers were employed at the Louis Vuitton building in agneur sur -Chien. Around 170 people still work at the atelier, which incredibly functioned as the only workshop of the brand until 1977. The site holds a special place in the hearts of Louis Vuitton's dedicated customers, as it serves as a bustling workshop where the brand's products are designed and produced for worldwide markets, as well as hosting a private museum with a stunning Art Nouveau design. It's this museum that was once the cherished family home of the Vuittons. The Agneur Sachens workshop has played a vital role in Louis Vuitton's history, as it was where the brand's Trianon trunk, a famous flat top grey trunk was created. The first Louis Vuitton trunk was designed for businessman Albert Kahn, but still one of the most notable products of the brand was undoubtedly the customized bed trunk created for French adventurer Pierre Savignan de Brazza in 1874. This unique trunk could be converted into a bed, making it the perfect travel companion for someone like Brazza, who remained a loyal supporter of the brand until his passing in 1905. This is where Louis Vuitton started to face a serious problem. You see, during this period, when people mainly travelled by horse-drawn carriages, ships, or steam locomotives, the groundbreaking flat-top design made it much more manageable and stackable compared to traditional rounded trunks. Combine this with their premium build quality, and you have an instantly popular product that was very, very prone to theft. In those days, robberies were common, and thieves would often prey upon wealthier individuals. So to tackle this issue, in 1886, Louis Vuitton's son, Georges Vuitton, worked tirelessly with his father to develop a lock mechanism that completely transformed baggage safety. The lock system, which featured two spring buckles, earned a reputation for being pickproof and was later patented by Georges. Even today, Louis Vuitton bags come equipped with this legendary lock. Following Louis Vuitton's passing at 70 in 1982, Georges took over the reins of the luxury luggage brand. He continued his father's legacy and presented the brand outside of France for the first time at the Chicago World Fair in 1983. Now real quick, before we take a deeper look at Georges Vuitton's ingenuity, please leave a like and consider subscribing if you're enjoying the video thus far. Georges, who once headed the luxury fashion house, did something remarkable during his tenure. He introduced an iconic symbol everyone now associates with Louis Vuitton, 
the famous Louis Vuitton monogram. The brand had grappled with counterfeit products for years, even when the founder was still alive. Georges began using hand-painted striped patterns and Damier-printed canvas on Louis Vuitton trunks in 1876 to combat this. This made it easier for customers to distinguish between genuine and cheap copies. The Damia print canvas was especially noteworthy, inscribed with Marc L. Vuitton Despose. In 1896, Georges wanted to pay tribute to his late father whilst simultaneously thwarting those who tried to copy their designs by developing the brand's signature monogram canvas. A beautiful beige on brown design featuring graphic flowers and cartrefoil with his father's initials LV incorporated into it. The classic monogram has since been a prominent feature in almost every luxury product that the brand has produced. Over the years, the design has undergone minor changes, but the monogram has stood the test of time, becoming arguably the most recognizable icon within the fashion industry. In 1996, Louis Vuitton marked the 100th anniversary of the monogram by uniting six renowned fashion designers. Vivienne Westwood, Romeo Gigli, and other legends in the field came together to create unique luggage pieces using the iconic print. The collection was then showcased globally, including a vinyl record box, a backpack with a built-in umbrella, and an oval-shaped shoe trunk. Before this, Louis Vuitton used collaborations to grow the brand's influence. A few to know are with Coco Chanel in the 1920s that led to the creation of the iconic Squire handbag, which was later renamed Alma. The brand also produced the Speedy and Keepall bags in the 1930s. Despite allegations of supporting the Vichy regime during World War II and struggling with the financial repercussions of war, Louis Vuitton remained relevant and innovative under the new leadership of Georges' son, Gaston Louis Vuitton. Reflecting on how Gaston's leadership influenced the Louis Vuitton legacy is fascinating. While he continued to build upon the foundations his father and grandfather established, he also introduced new elements such as leather and the iconic Papillon bag. Popularity continued to skyrocket in the 1960s as the brand was embraced by celebrities like Juliette Grieco and Catherine Deneuve. The notorious image of Anna Magnani with a stack of Louis Vuitton bags during her vacation in Paris in 1960 is an enduring symbol of the brand's appeal. After Gaston's passing in 1970, Henry Recamier took the reins and elevated Louis Vuitton to a global stage. With his guidance, the brand expanded tremendously, opening over 100 stores across the globe within just 10 years. Not only that, Recamier took the company public in 1984 and merged with other luxury French brands, Champagne Titan, Moet à Chandon, and esteemed cognac producer, Hennessy. This merger formed the world-renowned LVMH. Recamier's tenure was cut short due to a legal dispute, but his successor, Bernard Arnault, continued to lead the brand to new heights. What's truly remarkable is how Louis Vuitton's success in high fashion only began in the 1990s when Ives Carcel became the brand's president. Under his leadership, Louis Vuitton became a beacon of contemporary fashion for elite clientele, and Marc Jacobs' addition to the brand in 1997 was the icing on the cake. Marc Jacobs' tenure as Louis Vuitton's creative director was marked by unparalleled growth, innovation, and elevating the brand's exclusive reputation. He introduced the brand's first ready-to-wear line in 1998, and his designs were groundbreaking. His collaborations with some of the most talented contemporary artists worldwide reimagined Louis Vuitton's iconic bags and were celebrated for their distinctive styles. Jacobs often reused Sprouse's graffiti style, and Takashi Murakami put his twist on the LV monogram in playful colours. Jacobs remained in charge of the creatives until 2014, when he left to focus on his own eponymous label. Fashion gurus Nicolas Jesquier and Virgil Abloh were next in line to bring in new accolades. Nicolas Jesquier, the renowned French fashion designer, was appointed as the artistic director of women's collections in November 2013. After Jacob's plans were revealed, Jesquier immediately went to work and unveiled his masterpiece, the Petit Malbag, during the fall 2014 fashion show. 
This bag has since been recognized as one of the finest products by Louis Vuitton. Jesquier drew inspiration from the brand's original trunk design and recreated it as a miniature handbag, incorporating the iconic LV S-Lock, calfskin leather, and golden brass detailing that were signature aspects of early trunks. Jesquier's first collection for Louis Vuitton featured racer leather pants, A-line skirts, zip-up high-neck sweaters, and boxy jackets. Kim Jones was the men's artistic director until 2018, until Virgil Abloh stepped in. Abloh debuted 56 styles for Louis Vuitton, including anoraks with cuts at the back, leather vests with the LV monogram, and double-breasted wool mohair blazers. A blow landed BTS, the well-known K-pop band, as Louis Vuitton's new ambassador in April 2021, in addition to Naomi Osaka, Sophie Turner, and Emma Stone. Today, Louis Vuitton is one of the most recognizable luxury brands in the world, and its success is a testament to the vision and dedication of its founder. The brand continues to build upon the legacy that was started over 150 years ago, creating beautiful pieces that are designed to last a lifetime. Now before you go, be sure to check out my other videos and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching.